Welcome to the first part of Silith History Story and take a look at how things started and how the town developed. It's thought that Silith got its name from monks at nearby home Coulter Abbey who stored grain here by the sea in barns called Lays, hence Sea Lays. In historical documents and maps there has been many changes to the spelling over the years to become the Silith that we know today. In 1823 Carlisle Canal opened and ships would sail up the Solway along to Port Carlisle and up to the west of the city. But with eight locks to contend with it wasn't all plain sailing. And being tidal the entrance would silt up quite frequently. By 1837 the railway had extended from Newcastle along to Carlisle which sounded the death knell for the canal. Company directors Dixons, Cars and others decided to drain the canal and build a railway. In 1853 the first stretch of the railway was opened. and extended to the coast where a harbour could be built in 1856. At this time there was nothing at Silleth and the Carlisle Journal accused these directors of building a railway to a rabbit warren. Blitterlees was an earlier settlement as mentioned in very early Abbey documents. Along the road from Blitterlees was Green Row. Where in 1780 Green Row Academy was founded. The pupils, all boys, even came from overseas to be taught mathematics, physiology, astrology and many other subjects. The fees were 25 guineas a year. It closed in 1870. Skimberness was important in olden times and was a base for Edward I's invasion of Scotland 1290 to 1302. At Groon Point Skimberness was the Chapel of St John and burial ground. It was thought to have been built 1175 but shown on this map here of 1590. It's unlikely that there would be a harbour at Skimberness. Ships would be beached and unloaded there. Long House Skimberness is an interesting old building thought to have been used by smugglers and in the 1700s was the Greyhound Inn, now converted to housing. In 1855 the navvies arrived and work started to build a town. There was probably more than these fellas. Carlisle Journal Plan published 1857 just after construction began, no three churches, none which were built were shown. This 1856 engraving was used on posters for the opening of the railway. This map of 1860, which was actually surveyed in 1863, north the convalescent home and over west Prospect Terrace. Silleth Gazette of 1860, advertising the Queen's Hotel and Solway Hotel. 1861 census chart. The 1851 census had only four households. By now there was 128. The Queen's Hotel was one of the early places to be built.
a more recent Queen's Hotel. The baths where a steam pump brought sea water to be heated for bathing. This very early glass negative shows the baths, top left, no mill yet, and no promenade. The Solway Hotel, note the original name before coming the Solway Golf Hotel, and then the Golf Hotel we know today. The end of Eden Street, no Martin's shop yet. Martin's shop being built. Originally only the Marshall Dock, which collapsed in 1879. It was decided to build a new dock further east and leave the old dock as a tidal basin. Construction of the dock using a steam excavator and a temporary rail track. This map shows what was planned. The new dock opened in 1885, cars mill built 1886, see the manager's house on the right. Dagny entering the dock. The Nared. Ships would bring goods from all over the world. Timber and cotton from North America have been one example. The dock full of ships. The coal hoist used to get coal into the steamers and further along the 25 ton steam crane which was the biggest between Liverpool and Glasgow. The Yarrow regularly docked and sailed to Glasgow, the Isle of Man and Dublin. In 1929 this vessel was renamed the Acero. Winnie Bell from Mowbray remembers being aboard. Uh, I went to the Isle of Man two or three times um, and this would be in about the 1930s. Um, as I remember the cattle were at one end of the boat and the passengers at the other. We had a rough crossing once or twice and the other time it was very calm and enjoyable. But I was seasick. One of the early industries was the salt works along by the docks which imported rock salt from Belfast for processing. The salt works cottages survived much longer. The battery opened 1886 by Armstrongs of Newcastle to test their armaments. It closed in 1928. The chemical works established 1870 by William Crabb, manufacturing agricultural fertiliser. They also made pop in this shed at the front. They later moved the lemonade works to West Silleth and sold to Arneson's around 1900. Crabb sold the fertiliser plant to Maxwell's and later taken over by Fison's in 1940. The convalescent home established in 1862 was built by voluntary subscription at a cost of £1,500. It had its own rail platform. The view from the convalescent home
To help the ships navigate into Sillith was Tommy Legg's lighthouse on the west beach, and further along was Eastcourt Lighthouse, which assisted the ships up to Port Carlisle and into Annan. The Solway Lightship was also used for navigation. It was later beached up at Skimberness and turned into a tea room. It was replaced by the Tobin. A ship passed the pier end. A steam tug leading ships out. Early bathers enjoying Silla's lovely warm water and making good of the beach huts. Along much of the seafront. Join me in part two soon where we'll take a look at more recent times. Hey, why don't we have a quick look now?